What's up guys, John from Heavy Set Tactical. Today I am reviewing a knife that was graciously sent to me by uh, Thomas Nugent over at Knives by Nuge. This is a, uh, a model of his, a new model of his. Um, this is kind of the prototype. It's called the Bruin and it's a Scandi. It's a 110 thou thick with about a 12 degree per side Scandi, which is really good because I think I said it in a short recently that when you guys take a, a lot of people got turned off of Scandies over the past few years because unless you're getting something that's handmade or a specific company making a Scandi, it's usually too thick. This is 110 thou thick. It's in CPM 3V. It's got really nice OD green handle scales and I'll show you some more close ups along the way. But it's just got a really neutral grip, nice pinch point. It's just a comfortable handle. It's a perfect, perfect handful, not much more. If you put a lanyard on it, you could choke back with two fingers and just do a little bit of light chopping, but I think it's pretty great, pretty great size. Uh, it has a nice, what I would say is like an acid wash and tumble. Looks like they tumbled it with a pretty large media. It look, looks good. And then the top of the spine is absolutely razor sharp. So it's going to hit a ferro rod really good. Uh, he did he did this kind of like, kind of like the uh, Wenger Blades triway carry system sheath. Um, this is a, I forget, I can't tell you the company that started these sheaths like this with the flat back that go in the pocket or they can go on the belt and then you can put the knife in either way. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool sheath. And... It's meant to be carried in the front pocket. So you can just pull it right out and no matter what way it's sticking, you can just put it right back in, it's ready to go. Doesn't rattle, it's not falling out of the sheath. There's actually kind of like what I would almost summarize as a brush guard inside of this sheath. It's like a, kind of like a fuzzy material along that front bump there. So when you slide this in and out, it's not scraping real bad. And that fuzzy material in there it's almost like felt, but a little more fuzzy, like, uh, you know, like the the uh, the other side of Velcro. It kind of holds it in there nicely. So we're going to do some very, very light batoning. We're going to do um, maybe a little bit of tip testing and some carving. And I want to show you guys how this hits a ferro rod. So let's check it out. Okay, guys. So I use my trusty, dusty never rusty Baco saw you guys know I love this saw I think it's a great survival tool they're like 20 bucks this is a Baco B-A-H-C-O Baco foldable saw collapsible saw now it's not as nice as the silky boys but what it lacks in uh what it lacks in style it makes up for by just being a hard use saw been using that thing for about 18 months now on my channel it, and it has all its teeth, haven't broke a tooth, nothing. So as you guys can see, this is a in the pocket sheath with that Bruin, the Knives by Nuge Bruin, which is nice. Oh, you gotta clip it on there. It's kind of hard to get off sometimes if your pants are all bunched up under there. Comes out really nice. Give you a little bit better of a look at that knife up close. You can see Knives by Nuge Maker's Mark. And then CPM 3V, it's a little hard to tell unless I tilt the blade. Now guys, like I said, this is 115 thou thick with a beautiful finish on either side. Perfectly symmetrical, symmetrical grind. I checked it with my calipers just for shits and gigs. Uh, and then that really nice OD green micarta. Um, but it's just, just really, really well balanced. And then you can see he did what... Uh, what LT Wright does and they, you know, they don't care that they're affecting the finish and neither did he. He wanted a nice sharp spine with a burr. That's exactly what he did. So it's not a flaw in the coating or the tumble. It's by design. Okay. So we're gonna do what you're not supposed to do. We're gonna do, just cause this is 3V, we're gonna do a little bit of batoning Man, that cracked in half really nice. We're gonna do a little bit of batoning just to kind of get 
you know, just to kind of show that you guys can baton with these, especially if you're going to make a uh, bow drill divot. You know, a bow drill, sorry, a bow drill divot. Especially if you're gonna make a bow drill, you guys are gonna take a piece of wood just like this. You're gonna bore your hole in this nice flat piece here. You're gonna bore your hole right in that soft center part. And that's gonna be your plank. You know, you can come at it from this side to flatten the bottom. And that's gonna where be where you put a bow drill divot. So you might have to use a Scandi to baton a little bit. I'm just showing you guys the capability and strength of this Scandi. Man, that worked extremely well. Now I got a little more rank of a piece. It's got a, got a serious knot in it. And guys, this is very, very hard wood, very dead wood. There's a knot here and a knot down here. Very, very, very hard. Cutting it with the Baco uh, uh, was extremely, extremely tough. It just took a lot longer than it normally does because of how hard the wood is. Oh, man. Guys, do not do this at home with a Scandi, please. Holy crap. It's just fine. I kind of figured it would be because it's CPM 3V, and you guys know, as long as the heat treat is even remotely acceptable, CPM 3V is nasty stuff. Not one nick, not one roll. Absolutely nothing on that Scandi so far. Which, it might happen, and I need you guys to understand one thing. If it happens, that does not mean that this is a weak knife or a bad heat treat. You are not supposed to baton with Scandis. Except for maybe a Work Tough Gear Scandi, because they are really thick. Again, this is not an overbuilt Scandi. This is a 12 degree per side carving and feather sticking and fire prep knife the way that it's supposed to be. So now I got a slightly longer piece here. We're gonna span this long piece and then try to do a little bit of feather sticking with this knife. Oh man, this is some tough wood. It might not look it, but it, trust me, it is. And this knife is just doing fantastic. Now we're gonna go uh, against the grain just a little bit. We're gonna come in. Uh, actually, you know what? We're gonna go like this. We're gonna make it interesting. Excuse me, guys. Every time I come up on top of this hill, it's really cold out right now. So my nose is running. We're gonna do some cross grain batoning, which is not suggested with a Scandi either. Oh. Guys, I'm telling you, this thing is so good. And it's not one of those burrs on the spine that's too sharp to still get some really nice uh, uh, thumb action on there. You know, it's not, not too sharp to where it's gonna potentially really hurt your thumb, uh, providing that pressure in the back. It's just a great carver, great carver. It just, it, cause it doesn't do what you guys think it's gonna do. Like all these other way too thick Scandies, it's not gonna just dig right in. It's gonna let you run those fine curls that you see people doing with Scandi. Scandies. It's going to let you do all that precision cutting, but without having it really, really just run way too far in. Now it grabs a little more than normal, but, uh, you know, a little more than a saber grind with a secondary V edge, that's for sure. But I'm telling you guys, all those videos you see, especially me, I, I've said a lot before that I don't like uh, I don't like Scandies because they just dig right into the steel or right into the wood, the material. And then you're like, oh God, now I got this dug in, 
Can't get a consistent feather stick going. And, uh, and the, the beauty about this knife is that it's a really well done Scandi. So you can get those nice curls for, for starting a fire. See how paper thin this is? It's like a planer. Guys, when you have a hundred thou or a hundred and ten thou thick or a hundred and five thou thick, right in that range, that's how, when you get a custom Scandi, like a Morse Kahansky or a uh, Rob Evans MK1 Mor Morse Kahansky tribute knife, those Scandies are nice and thin. They're not over overbearing, they're not too thick. So using a, a Scandi like this that has 12 degrees per side where it's supposed to be for a Scandi grind, it doesn't dig right in. It allows you to still get that carving power and that bite if you choose it, but it's not, it's not digging straight in to where then, this is what it looked like. You know, for example, I love work tough gear. And if you like a Scandi that's tough, work tough gear is your ball. But what I like about, what I didn't like about work tough gear is when you would go like this and try to find your edge with a Scandi that's that thick, it would go like this and just immediately dig right in until it would stop. It'd stop your knife dead in its tracks. But this one is so thin on the overall thickness of the blade that it allows you to just find your edge like you do with a saber and then use it with these planer, you know, like a, like a wood planer, just taking these super thin curls. And again, my, my feather sticking isn't the best, but I'm telling you guys, you use one of these 12 degree per side Scandies like this and you use it regularly, you're gonna be like Mr. Professional with the feather sticks because Rob Evans also, Rob Evans Bushcraft, really, really love that guy's channel. I have uh, one of his Morris Kahansky tribute knives. And one thing I will tell you is that his favorite way to feather stick is placing the blade against your shin like this up on your knee but i'm doing it lower so the camera can pick it up and then drawing the knife finding your finding your angle and then continue to draw the knife just like i'm doing here but a little more controlled so the curls aren't falling all over the place and that's a really good way to feather stick but i am you know, I'm here to show you guys just how tough and durable, but comfortable this knife is. Now, uh, you know what, guys? Let me blow my nose. Give me two seconds to be continued. What do you say, guys? John from Heavy Set Tactical, back from blowing my nose. <laughs> Let's do it. Guys, Knives by Nuge, Thomas Nugent. He is a... A really good dude and man I hate hoodies you can't really tie them things up he's a really good dude and he's been uh, helpful along my journey you know I got I got Gary Creeley from Creeley blades I got uh, Alan from primitive bear knives I got uh, Mike who owns uh, Mike Kent who owns uh, River's Edge cutlery I got all these guys that have helped me along my journey getting the shop ready answering questions, giving me their perspective on finishes, and uh, uh, my buddy over at, uh, Trevor over at Mill Run Knife Company, right in Meadville, PA. I've had so many people help me, and uh, right along that list, one of, my, one of my buddies that I talk to and uh, comment on his knives pretty regularly is uh, Tom from uh, Knives by Nuge. So he had posted a photo of the prototype and it was this knife right here so i sent him a message and i said dude you gotta let me get one of those scandies when they're ready uh you know let me get first crack at that drop i'll buy one and review it and he uh couple couple maybe like a week later uh i had messaged him again about something that he posted and he said shit man you know i'll send i'll send you that scandy to review for me and to keep 
and I said, holy crap. And that's how it happened. That's simple. So he's a good dude. He's willing to help out a small channel like mine. And, uh, you know, knows that I'm, to be honest with you, we got to talking. And I think he understands that though there's a lot I'm unpracticed at now uh, in the Scandi world or in the, sorry, the Scandi world, the bushcrafting world, you know, he knows that I'm passionate about my woodsman knives as much as I am my folders or my tack knives. Now, I'd say the biggest part of my collection is quote unquote survival bushcraft knives. Then second runner up, uh, I have a pretty serious collection of combat knives and field knives. So I would label three. I would label uh, uh, like survival slash bushcraft knives because a good survival knife a lot of people are going to just go head over heels for me saying this but you got you got you got your woods knives you got bushcraft and scandies and thinner stuff and carvers then you got your big uh thicker um survival knives that are made to you know have a nice guard for self-defense against animals bears what have you but they can they're designed to be able to do the woodsman tasks so i put those in the same area even though they're not built the same then in the center you got general belt and edc knives and then you uh you know just kind of general stuff that also works a lot in those other two categories uh and then you got um combat knives slash field knives so for me um you know i would i would say that what's funny about that the way i just laid that out is i could take most of my survival knives and put them in a combat knife role and they will suffice gabe over at the last huntsman channel one of my closest compadres in the knife community to date you know, he tells the story all the time about how when he was in active duty, he carried a Becker BK-7, um, you know, for quite some time. And it served him very well. So he's, you know, had a faithful thing for the Becker knives. And then he got me, me into Becker knives back in the day. But, uh, you know, it, it all depends on what you're using them for and what you want them to be able to be used for. Because I, you know, I, I like this knife. I plan on using this for feather sticking and camp tasks. And it's thin enough where it's not going to cut food like crap, like a big thick Scandi wood. It's going to slice through food pretty well. Uh, you know, it is a Scandi, so you don't have that long tapered saber grind or full flat grind. So it's not, you know, it's kind of going to more pop down through food. But it, it will cut it a lot better than a super thick Scandi because it's nice and thin, the, the profile. Uh, so make a long story short, you know, I got this knife for the woods. Would this knife work as an EDC knife? If you guys like the look of a Scandi grind? Absolutely. 100%. And he laid back the handle scales. You can see at the top of the handle scales, they crown and then, and then roll back real nice. That's so nice for, for a pinch grip like that. Or when you lay it over to just have a nice ramp for your thumb to sit on for scraping and you guys ready for this uh tom over at knives by nuge took his responsibility of making a quote-unquote scandy bushcraft knife very seriously this is not if this was green and fresh one pull this one push this would completely bear it right down to the lighter wood underneath this is super rock hard dead wood that's been sitting in the elements and getting rained on and look at that this thing is absolutely wicked as a uh, scraper so there's a an old old type of planer from back in the day where they would take a block of metal that's like an inch thick right picture like a uh, a block of any kind of steel that's pretty thick about that long, about that that wide. And they would take off of, they would grind the face of it so it had a fresh burr sticking down on the bottom. And then they would drag it and that burr would shear off whatever they wanted to to make it flat. And, and that's, you know, pretty out of date tech. 
But that's the concept of leaving a really sharp burr on these knives. Exact same premise. I'm using that to scrape. I'm using that to flatten something. You know, when you're doing a bow drill, once you, once you carve it with that nice flat spot. Now this doesn't exactly have a flat belly. Uh, when I do my specs and pricing, I'll put a flat to it. It's got, you know, a pretty rounded profile. Must be a deer over there, I heard that. That was something loud. It's got a pretty rounded belly. I'll tell you what guys, there's something dark and big as hell right over here. Holy shit, pardon my French. Looks like, I thought it was a wolf, dude. It's a big German Shepherd. So guys, for the first time in your lives, you are either either going to see me jack up a German Shepherd with this Bruin, or hopefully there's somebody walking their dog down in these woods. So I guess we'll find out, because that thing was pretty big. It went up over this ridge. Mm -hmm. So, shit. Okay. Back to the subject. If you guys see it coming, comment. Turn your fat ass around, John. All right. So, what I'm saying, what I was saying about this knife is, you know, once you use the flat to get your area kind of prepped for where you're going to do, you know, where you're going to do your, what's it called, your bow drill here, you could even use the back because the back is nice and flat. It's got a slight drop point on it from about here down, but most of the back of this knife you can use as a flat planer just as we discussed so you know if you got something anything and you're in a survival situation or you know you're out camping whatever and you need a nice flat surface you can use the back of this knife and scrape a nice flat area oh god That dog didn't even pay attention to us, did it, Pop? Yeah. Shit. Had me a little worrying, friend. Hang it. Listen, when you get your ass mauled by a dog, guys, feel free to come talk to me and tell me that you look out for big black dogs in the middle of the woods. And we are in the middle of the woods. You know, there's such things as feral dogs, packs of dogs. You guys go out to Arizona. There's huge packs of feral dogs that actually hunt down other dogs when they get out and other dogs in neighborhoods. I watched a whole thing on this. So there's a, a pack of rabid, you know, feral dogs. And when they come across a domestic dog, the dog has two options to get killed by them or to join. It's literally like an LA gang thing. It's wild. But this woman had uh, feral dogs in the middle of nowhere in Arizona come and take her dog literally and then she actually got her dog back because someone on a farm trapped a couple of those dogs in their barn. She got her dog back and she said it was like nuts. And it was like literally really, really, really aggressive. So it was changed by its experience with that feral group. Man, I talk about the most random shit when I'm working, huh? When I'm shooting a video. So guys, so far, this knife, uh, I knew it was going to impress me, and I knew it was going to be a, a hard-use Scandi, despite how thin it is, because 3V is awesome. But this is, like, next level. My enjoyment of this knife is next level. So, thank you to Nuge Knives. You made a hell of a Scandi. Designed a hell of a Scandi. You guys know who else is uh, finally putting out some Scandies I saw that I liked? Alan from Primitive Bear Knives. He's dropping some Scandies. Uh, I'm really intrigued to, to check one out and get my hands on one. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'm just doing some like some cross grain batoning and then I'm gonna dig that wedge out with the tip just to see how it runs. Now guys, normally if I was gonna notch something, I would do it by hand, but today I'm just doing this to give it some extra kind of hard use right on that belly 
And as you can see, get some of that crap off there. As you guys can see, that thing is still on a normal secondary V edge, even if it's razor sharp, I can run my thumb along there very lightly. Ooh, this one is so sharp, it just goes right to cut. Guys, this edge is still perfect. Absolutely perfect. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. Very, very, very well done. Nice and strong, good heat treat. So now I put my notches on either side and I'm gonna come in this way and dig out either way a little bit. That's what I like about how this has kind of a rounded profile to it, is you can just dig out. Now, again, with a Scandi, you wanna to try to stay away from drawing across this way. You wanna to try to cut forward as much as you can. So I've been tossing it back and forth and cutting straight down, back and forth and cut straight down. But guys, whether you're notching, feather sticking, uh, and, and doing almost any, any, any job when you're on a camping trip, taking a survival course, whatever you're doing, guys, this, this knife just works so well. And I'm even doing that drawing across that I just told you not to do. I'm doing it because I'm testing this knife and I want to see... You know, if it's going to put up with some some not so smart things to do, then you can get that tip in there and you got just enough clearance to run that tip a little bit and just clean it out and do a push cut. Take the edge out, take stick that tip in there, get some of that crap out of there. And guys, it just works. Let's see how it chops a little bit. Now again, this is absolutely ridiculously hard wood. So let's start with the thin side. Oop. Now guys, I'm just doing two fingers with the thumb on the back, thumb on the side. And just like that, that's all you got with something this thin and light. And it does do a good job. You know, if you really needed to take some meat off quicker. Hey man, it's like a freaking beaver. I'm really, really liking this. I think it's a fantastic knife. Honestly, it, it couldn't get any more much of a praise from me. I think it carves like a dream. Real quick before I show you guys... Uh, before we go over specs and pricing and I show you guys just how nasty this spine is on a ferro rod, let's, uh, let's see how well it runs this, uh, this triangular piece. Let's run it down to a point. Am I still centered pretty good? Cool. So let's see how it, and also I'm gonna put it in a reverse grip Oh man, guys, this thing is a frickin' hoss. So reverse grip's comfortable. Doing pool cuts comfortable. Very comfortable. Reverse grip's comfortable. Hammer grip's comfortable. Scraping with it's very, very comfortable because of those nice laid back tips of the micarta there. So guys, usually it's really funny. I shoot every diff every video a little bit differently. So sometimes I'll do very specific categories, like test the edge a little bit by chopping and batoning, even though batoning doesn't test the edge much. I think it tests the tip pretty good. Uh, and bigger knives, I will take the time to baton a lot more uh, usually, but I, I don't much I don't do a lot of batoning anymore um, on, on really crazy stuff. Oh God, look at that. Oh. I'm telling you guys, this thing is a workhorse. So what I was gonna say was usually, got a nice, nice purchase on there, nice deep guard. 
Now guys, usually I will take the time to do separate categories, you know, a little bit of tip testing, a little bit of batoning, a little bit of chopping, a little bit of this. But I kind of, because it's a smaller knife, I kind of wanted to run everything as like one continuous video without the dog chewing my butt off. Um, so, you know, I, I like not cutting the video away. It shows the, you know, the fact that none of this is, you know, let me strop it before I before I carve, let me hone the edge back before I do this, or I don't know. I like to run it concurrent, I do. If I can do most of my videos like that, I will. Guys, this thing, it, it just, it makes the chore of carving just simple. It just makes it simple. It makes it a lot easier uh, and, and doesn't make it such a chore. It makes it kind of a fun activity because it just goes through this hard, hard wood so well. Oh. You know what? There's a nice thin piece. So I'm going to th throw some sparks with this baby and show you guys. I want to try to get this top, this thicker part split here. There we go. So now, I'm just gonna hit one more feather. And then I wanna show you guys how this throws sparks. To be continued. Okay guys, so I adjusted the camera to show you more up close of what I'm doing here. So guys, in my pouch here, I have some hemp rope uh, soaked in kerosene for a day or two and then dipped in beeswax. And that holds the kerosene into that hemp rope. Then I have a couple pieces of fat wood. This is an emergency stash. It's a lot nicer to have big long pieces that you could really, really carve into and kind of fe uh, feather stick slash scrape with the back of your knife. So we got the brewing. And as you can see, getting that fibrous, fibrous it just took me a little while because these small pieces are hard but getting that nice fibrous fat wood you can also go like this oop, and carve some smaller pieces of it and throw them in there and then a little piece of that hemp rope now i'm just showing you guys this is, has the capability of starting a fire but that's why i told you mill run knife company ships their business cards in these tins empty with a business card in it so you can use it to make a little kit or char cloth you guys you know you bushcraft guys know that the char cloth is great in those tins so i'm using my half inch bayite uh ferrocerium rod comes with this goofy thing on it i always left it on there because sometimes it's nice to just be able to grab it out of your pack once you feel that texture you can pull it out of your pack guys this is this is one of those knives that really, really grabs. Now I'm, I'm doing this to get the paint off. I'm gonna start on a fresher side. I've been using this face for a long time. This thing is ready to go. Holy crap, I wasn't even trying that. You guys saw that. I literally was not even trying it. I was doing it facing over here. And it lit that stuff up so fast. And normally I'd have a bunch of feather sticks, probably still on the stick. In this case, I just cut a couple of the bundles off. And you take all your feather stick bundles and throw them right on top of that fat wood. And you make your fire. Just an awesome knife. Awesome, awesome knife. This is the Knives by Nuge Bruin. Uh... Just strikes a fire, fire rod, fire rod like it's crazy, crazy born to it. Just milks them. And guys, that stuff will just wipe right off for the most part. It might mark up your spine a little bit, but it marks right or comes right off. If you have a delicate spot for doing it, you can stab your knife in and put your pile of stuff behind it and do it like that. That's what a lot of guys do with bigger knives. They'll stab it in, 
put your tinder behind the knife and just drag towards you. Me, I'm a little sloppier than that. I like to go right over top and rain from above. Guys, the Knives by Nuge Bruin is just a win hands down on all fronts. You guys might think the handle's a little thin for some of you guys that like the broomsticks, the, the uh, whatchamacallit, the old bushcraft knives, the LT Wrights, stuff like that. The LT Wright Genesis, that's another great Scandi. But even that is a little thick. I think it might be just a little thicker than this. So, uh, again, 12 degrees per side is perfect in my eyes. And to be honest with you guys, I think this Knives by Nuge Bruin is just perfect. I am going to purposefully, I would never put a, a knife looking like this in my sheath to keep some of the crap out of my sheath, you know. But I'm going to make the drive home and I am going to do, because it's getting dark. I'm going to make the drive home with this knife all dirty like this so you guys know it's the same knife and I didn't strop it. I didn't hone it. We're going to do a paper cut test and we're going to do specs and pricing. But I want to show you guys how perfect that edge is. So I'm not going to touch this up. I'm not going to clean it. Might have some drag marks from uh, putting it in and out of the sheath. But guys, the Knives by Nuge Bruin, it's comfortable, it's functional, it's tough. Uh, you know, I, I didn't totally, totally, totally try to break it today because I love the knife so much. I didn't try to break it, uh, but I definitely, definitely put it through, through its paces today. Because again, what you guys see on camera is probably about 40% of what I've done with the knife total. And I've carried, a pre carried it a pretty good amount before this. So guys, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to head home. We're not going to clean it up or do anything yet. We're going to do the specs and pricing and a paper cut test to show you just how well that 3V edge held up. You can see the 3V laser engraved there. And guys, we'll have specs, pricing, and a paper cut test very, very soon. What's up, guys? John from Heavy Set Tactical. This is the segment of the video where we talk about price and specs and any kind of extra information that I like to go over. Now, guys, I don't usually say this, but don't be afraid to like and subscribe on my video. Uh, uh, it really does help. And, you know, my channel is not very big. So it's pretty cool that Knives by Nuge sent me this knife. So, guys, this is the uh, uh, Knives by Nuge Bruin. This is his uh, ambi sheath, ambidextrous sheath. It goes in this way. Or you can turn around and put it in the other way. Fits really well. Rides nicely right in the pocket. No rattle whatsoever, which is pretty impressive for an ambidextrous sheath. It's Kydex. So we're going to talk about specs. Um, this is a CPM 3V variant. He has a few of the Nitro V ones, uh, Nitro V Scandies left on the website. Uh, I think they're all the ones that are left are in orange and black G10 or just solid orange G10. Uh, but he does, or actually I think they're in orange micarta. I'm not sure. You have to check on the website. So guys, this is the Bruin, B-R-U-I-N, Bruin. And this one's in 3V. He decided to do his next batch in 3V. Uh, I will get a drop date and post a short about it. Right now I do not have a drop date. Um, the, the Bruin model by, uh, by Knives by Nuge is usually in Nitro V and it's $335. So I'm pretty sure he's going to do these at $350 or, or keep them at $335. They're going to be right around there, right around that $350, uh, uh, price range. Guys, this is just a fantastic knife. It's from a small, uh, American maker. You know, he does... He has, uh, part of his process is milled, and then I think he does the finishing on the blades and, and you know, sh cuts the bevels in, sharpens them, uh, does the surface finishing. So, uh, you know, when I say maker, um, I, I, I mean it. Some, some people do full, uh, you know, I, I would call, it's weird. There's a lot of people that get overcritical about me calling someone a knife maker when they have everything made in a CNC machine, but that's not fair because, 
you know, they, they not only, they're not just a knife designer because they're assembling, they're checking tolerances, they're doing a lot of aspects of uh, manufacturing except for the handwork. So, okay, they're not making it, they are making it, I don't care. Uh, Tom is a knife maker. He does his grinding, some of his surface stuff, uh, you know, some of the coating stuff or the tumbling stuff, um, and just does a great job. So he's a knife maker. <laughs> I don't really care what anyone says. So guys, the overall length, before we go on a tangent, the overall length is 8.25 inches. Let's check it on the table, 8.25. The blade is 3.75 inches long and three and a half cutting edge, it looks like. Um, if you can see there, actually that might be a 3.7, 3.65 cutting edge. Uh, it's 60 to, or actually, shoot, 60 to 61 HRC is on the 3V. Again, guys, this is a 3, or that's on the uh, Nitro V. This is the 3V prototype, so it's a little different as far as the HRC, but the overall specs are the same. Uh, overall length, 8.25 inches. It's 3.30 seconds thick in CPM 3V. Shoop, super sharp spine. Um, this one's in OD Green Micarta. Ambidextrous sheath. It's blackened and tumbled, just like the Nitro V1s. This coating's all jacked up for me. Uh, during the video, I told you guys I was going to leave it until I got home so you could see. Now, he does his, his Nitro V at 60 to 61, which is perfectly fine. Nitro V's are pretty tough stainless. But guys, this 3V is at another level. Let's do single paper first. Now I want you guys to take a very close look at this. You can tell I did not strop or touch this edge and it is still perfect. The only thing that looks like it's chipped up here a little bit is just from sap. I was literally scraping side by side with this knife. And what you guys saw in video is a small percentage of what I've actually done with this. Look at this knife, it's really, really used. And it is still not one stop. Not one stop. It's a little less like terrifyingly sharp. You know, that level of like Scandi sharp. But look at that, dude. There is nothing wrong with this edge. It is perfect. I'm doing double pieces now. I'll go back to single. It is perfect. Oop. Absolutely no stoppages on that 3V Scandi. Guys, I'm telling you, I used to like, I had a MagnaCut Scandi that was really good. I had a case, the old Scandi from Work Tough Gear that was pretty good. But I've always thought that 3V made a great Scandi. Guys, this is 12 degrees per side. Uh, beautiful black encoding. It's 110 thou thick. It's perfect Scandi dimensions. A lot of people... As I said in my video, a lot of folks don't like Scandies because they've only had a super thick Scandy. These uh, Scandies are not meant to be super thick. They are meant to be, shoot, I dropped the cap to my cleaning stuff. Scandies are not meant to be super thick because then the angle of the Scandy is, is not, uh, is way, way too steep. So you, so it digs in way too, too rough into material and you can't get that nice feather stick and the only thing it does is really really bothers the user i think that this is perfectly thick enough strong enough tough enough so i used a little wd to get most of that crap off it's got a uh you know uh what's that called agent in it like a dissolving agent now I have these two products, the Wicked Wax and Wicked Clean. I really have been using them on all my 3V and uh, carbon steel knives. The ADCRV2 TKL I have uh, took really well to it. So you just massage some of that cleaner in, the, the Wicked Cleaner. Just keep rubbing some on a tissue. I used to use my finger, but it works a lot better with a cloth. That'll help clean some of the oils off the blade. Um, and some other things that might give it a little bit of a patina or what have you. Now me, I like my knives a little banged up. Some of them I don't, let's be honest, but 
Some of my folders I like to look a little cleaner. Uh, some of my gentlemen's carries, you know, I try not to let them patina or get too stained. Now, guys, I think you guys remember any of my real fans, any of my real uh, avid heavy set tactical watchers can tell you that when I was at Survive, we had a freshly done knife, freshly sharpened knife, zero grind like that. And I took the tip, literally the, yeah, right there. I took this whole chunk off, wiping down the blade. And oh my gosh, it was a bloody mess. So now when I'm wiping blades, I'm just slightly more careful with that. Still cut myself quite regularly. Uh, there's a good poke from this week. But I digress. So I'm just cleaning this as I talk. And this is the wax. That was the cleaning agent, the Wicked Clean. This is the Wicked Wax. These products are great and they are food safe for some of your camp camp kitchen knives or your, you know, ADC RV2 camp knives that you want to be able to cut food with and not worry about them every time you use them to go camping. This is a great substitute for using WD or using some other things that I talk about using for cleaning and, uh, you know, other solvents that have stuff in them that aren't food safe. Guys, this knife performed beyond all expectations. This was one of those knives I got recently uh, that just beyond all expectations was so much fun to test and very comfortable to carry. And now I actually messaged Tom from Knives by Nuge and I told him all I need for this is a leather sheath and it's never gonna leave my hip. It just screams to me, leather sheath, leather sheath. But um, it's perfectly fine in this sheath. It goes right in your pocket. You can put it either way. It's very helpful of a sheath. You know, if you're a busy guy and you got the saber grind with this configuration and you just need to pull it out and put it back in super fast with no crap or worrying about if it's clicked in or actuated, it is really nice to, to just throw it in there and it's in there. So guys, that's the Knives by Nuge 3V version of the Bruin. It went just so well testing. It was so much fun. Some of you guys, the more traditional guys with, about with the Scandies, might say that that handle is too thin or too flat and doesn't have the nice broomstick to it. And I am telling you, I used it all day and have carried it several times this week and literally beat on this thing. And it has not given me any uncomfortability. The only thing I will tell some of you, if you're heavy on carving, you might wanna just take a little bit of automotive sandpaper and don't freak out guys, me saying this. You might wanna take a little bit of automotive sandpaper and run it at a 45 just to knock that burr down a little bit. If you're not gonna be using this for any ferro rod stuff, you can knock that burr off a little bit and be able to put more pressure with your thumbs for carving and stuff. Um, it is a very, very sharp spine. Uh, but you saw me in the video carving and doing all kinds of stuff in all kinds of different places and different angles. Not once did I cut my thumbs or have any really bad hotspot or anything like that. I'm just letting some of you guys know that strictly use it as an EDC or carving knife and don't care if the sharp spine is sharp, you might wanna knock the burr off, that's all. So Creely Blades has some fantastic bug juice here. This is a uh, sharpening conditioner for your strop. And you just put a couple dots on there and massage it in. Sometimes I like to put a little more in than that. Make sure you shake it well. Shake well. Creely Blades, Gary Creely, fantastic guy. Check him out on Instagram uh, and Facebook. He's just a good good guy, solid knife maker. And we're gonna give this some nice stropping to clean that edge up a little bit. I was very, very hard on it. Now guys, a lot of people vary 
what they say on stropping and compounds and blah, 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 blah. I do have some of the green compound on here. You do not have to put a crap load on. This is a brand new strop, hard side, soft side. And um, my old one, you guys have seen my old one. It's trashed and just caked on there with green compound. But this one is newer. So I've been going lighter on the compound because you don't need a lot. You don't need as much as people think. And, uh, and it's a lot better to have one of these wooden ones that has a thinner piece of leather because it's just going to roll your edge over less. I used to get them with these thick, you know, eighth inch pieces of leather. That's just not necessary. That's more give and it's, it can roll your edge over a little more. And yes, there is such thing as overstropping. So don't do it. Now let's check this bad girl out. Oh my God. Guys, do you know how nice it is? Oh my God. You can hear the difference. Rewind it and listen to the first track. And now this. I love people that tell me that stropping doesn't do anything. Uh, take that to the bank. So, guys, the Bruin by Knives by Nuge. Fantastic knife. Really good guy. And Flex Cut makes a really nice... They sell them at knife stores, this brand. Don't like the purple. Kind of kind of weird to me, but uh, a little squirrely to me. But <laughs> love the knife. And Knives by Nuge graciously sent this to me. And you guys know, if it didn't do well, I'd tell you. If there was something that bothered me, I'd tell you. Basic is always better, guys. In my opinion, for belt knives, bushcraft knives, survival knives, combat knives, basic is always better. This is a basic Scandi at the thickness it should be at, 110 thou thick, nice 12 degree per side Scandi. That's what they're supposed to be at. It didn't bite in too hard at all. It feather sticked like a dream. And that knife is going to ride on my hip and in my pack for every camping trip in the near future to come. So guys, thank you so much. Don't be afraid to like and subscribe. Uh, you know, click down below. It's right down there. I would appreciate it very much. And thank you to everyone that continues to watch my videos and gives me feedback. Say good things, say bad things, say whatever you'd like. And my email, heavysettactical at gmail.com will be in the description. Always put it in the description of my videos. And that, my friends, is a wrap. You can email me about anything you want to talk about. Ask me any questions. I'm probably the only channel on the entirety of YouTube that, uh, that loves direct contact with the people that watch my videos. So if you have any questions or want to check anything out or literally message me on Instagram if you want to say, Hey, John, with that doll cutting um, into bone, I'll go out and take a deer antler and cut into it. I don't care. I, I love knives, man. This is what I do. So have a great night, guys. Like always, stay safe and stay heavy.